Matthew 28. In the end of the Sabbath, at it began to dawn, toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye do seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city, and showed one to the chief priest, and all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night, and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, unto a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 Good morning, Grace Baptist Church. Today is Easter, Resurrection Sunday. And uh, this is not the way I wanted to spend Easter and a little bit heartbroken about it and uh, probably not the way you wanted to spend Easter as well. But this is a way we trust that God's will has determined for us and uh, His will must be made uh, our will. We must comply our will with His will. I want you to join me in prayer. We do this every Sunday morning and uh, to prepare our hearts to worship. I need to prepare my heart to worship. You join with me in prayer. Don't do other things. Um, join me with prayer. Bow your head and pray and ask God to speak to you through the message, through the music today, and uh, that God would uh, join, uh, would help us to worship. Join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I need you today. I'm a little bit unsettled and uh, out of my rhythm. And uh, I, I ask God that you would just give me your spirit this morning to direct my thoughts, to direct the message we have for today. This is uh, um, a little bit difficult. I know we've been doing this for several weeks, but it's still not the same. Father, I pray that you would bless uh, this service today. Bless those that are watching this from home um, on Sunday morning. Uh, maybe those, some will watch it in weeks and months to come. They'll, they'll come across this some means, and you'll use it for your glory. And you're able to do that. And uh, we'll trust that uh, you're using this for your glory and uh, our good. Would you bless today in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, it is a joy to be with you all again today. And thank you for tuning in and listening to this particular message and broadcast. Our hearts and desires for the last several weeks uh, through this period has been to seek to be a blessing to you. And I trust and pray that your heart has been encouraged. Uh, each Sunday morning and evening and Wednesday night as you've heard God's word, and I trust it will be a blessing again to you here today. It is Easter Sunday, and uh, we're thankful that we can celebrate the resurrected Lord today. And what a thrill it is, even though we're not together and not seeing each other face to face, uh, we can still sing about the Lord and rejoice in the Lord and what he's done for us. One of our dear ladies here at church, Becky Brosnan, is going to come and sing for us this morning. I trust her song selection will be a great help and encouragement to you. She comes to sing for us, Forgiven Forever. Thank you. 
verse, and that's where I'll spend the majority of my message this morning. In Hebrews chapter 7, the Bible says in verse 25, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says, Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Heavenly Father, would you bless the reading of your word at this resurrection morning? Uh, and we, as we observe, we remember the resurrection, we celebrate it, we rejoice in it. Lord, bless the preaching of your word as well. May it be a help to your people. May it be an encouragement to me. I need it today. You're able. And uh, you're able to save to the utmost. Would you bless? Perhaps there's a soul today that will be listening. It's not for sure of their salvation. Perhaps today will be the day of salvation. What a joy that would be. And uh, only you could do that. We'll trust that you're blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in this verse that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I want to preach a message today called the ever-living one. I think you know the story of Easter. I think you know the story of Resurrection uh, Day. How Jesus had been dead in body for three days and the three nights. And uh, he had laid, his body had laid in the, in the grave and early, early before the dawn, before the breaking of dawn, Sunday morning, the first day of the week, after the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath ended at uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday evening, at nightfall on Saturday evening, that's the Sabbath was over. And then the Jewish calendar, the Jewish mindset, Sunday began on our Saturday night at 6 o'clock. They still observe it to that way. Today, um, the, uh, the, the day began in the evening. And so, sometime throughout the night, Early before the break of the day, the Lord Jesus comes back. He, he rises from the, the stones rolled away, and he rises again. Now, the resurrection proved that Jesus, who is who he said he was. His enemies were so concerned about his claims that he made before he died, before he went to the cross, that uh, they, they got to Pilate to give them a Roman detail to guard the tomb. They didn't, want, they didn't want his disciples to come and steal the body away and, and, and said, hey, see, he said he was going to rise again. So they got a Roman guard and they, and they, they had it guarded. They, they sealed the tomb. They put a heavy rock upon in front of the tomb and they, they did everything. Satan did everything to keep Jesus in the grave. But nothing could keep uh, the Son of Man dead, the Son of God dead. And uh, early on Resurrection Day, the, t the stone was rolled away, and he came out. He didn't just disappear. He came out of the grave. And eyewitnesses saw him. Eyewitnesses saw him. There is eyewitness accounts that verify that Jesus did indeed rise again from the dead. We have historical accounts. We have written historical accounts. And multiple ones of people that did see the risen uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that's recorded over and over. That's historical fact. I don't know why it's disputed today. We have historical fact that that's we accept so many other things in history. But for some reason, well, because of the, the, the influence of Satan, they do not want to admit that Jesus Christ did indeed rise from the dead. We serve a living Savior. And this verse says that he lives to make intercession for us today. I want to preach a, again, I'm going to preach a message today on the ever living one. I want you to notice, number one, that he is able. Number one, he is able. It says in this verse, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is able. Now, we all have certain abilities and talents that come from the grace of God and the training we ever see. Um, there are certain things that we know and uh, we can do in, uh, in, in this life because of, of what God has talented us with, has given us talented. Uh, we just heard Becky sing. We just heard uh, Thomas's. if you can play a musical instrument, uh, that takes an amount of talent that, that only God can really give. Uh, that takes a talent that God can give. And it also comes from very hard work and practice. 
And uh, some people are, are, are more gifted and quicker learners than others, but it does come from hard work as well. And uh, there's even some phases. We're going through the renovation, the remodeling project back in the foyer. And we, were, we, we had a couple projects and we were saying, maybe we should get a contractor, somebody who does this well and they're skilled in this manner. Or maybe they have the tool that we need to do this phase of the project. And, uh, but because they have certain skills, they're able to do what uh, we're not able to. The gospel records tell us some things that Christ is able to do. Now, he's, he's able to do infinitely more than what the Bible records. But these things we know because the Bible records. There's a couple of things I wanted to emphasize this morning that, 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 that he is able. He's able to heal disease. You know the story in Mark chapter 2. We won't turn there. But you know the story where, where the man who has the palsy, who's, who's a paralytic man, he cannot move, cannot walk. And so four men carry him to Jesus. That's where they go up to the roof, break it down, and, 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 and lower him down in front of Jesus. That's a, a magnificent story. But uh, the four men carry uh, the, uh, the man, uh, and Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Now that wasn't impressive to them. Now they complained about them. They were saying, who is this man that he forgives sins? Only God can forgive sins. And Zach, he was actually, uh, he said, that's exactly what I wanted to say. That only God can forgive sins. And Jesus is God. But forgiving sin was the big thing. The big event. Hey, uh, but they were interested in the smaller miracle. And the, the more visible miracle of that of uh, being raised from his disease from his palsy. So Jesus says, hey, get up. Take up your bed, walk. Get up. That was the easy thing for God to do. And the big thing was to forgive sins. And the man gets up. See, Jesus is able, you know, Jesus is able to heal disease. This, this coronavirus that has totally shut down our world, that has inflicted our world and, and has put our world in, into almost a state of panic. I mean, Jesus is able to wipe out this coronavirus instantly. But maybe, and I underline the word maybe, he's interested in working a greater work, a greater miracle, a spiritual miracle in our world. Now, I don't know what that miracle is. I don't know what that is. I can't tell you what the will of God is. I'd just like him to heal the disease. And so probably would you. We're, we're usually interested in the smaller miracles, but God often is looking for the greater miracle. But God is able, Jesus is able to heal disease. Is there a greater spiritual need in your life? Uh, is there an issue of sin that maybe Jesus wants to deal, to deal with rather than, than, than healing something in your body? Hey, he is able to forgive sin. He is able to heal disease. He's also able, the Bible tells us in the, in the New Testament, in, in the account, gospel records, that he is able to cast out demons. Now, the visible demon, demonic activity during the ministry of Jesus is interesting. Um, now, of course, Satan has been working since the, since the Garden of Eden. He'll continue working until he's cast into the, into the lake of fire. Um, that Satan has always been at work and his minions have been at work. But during the ministry of Jesus... And it was recorded. The visible um, activity of demonic activity is interesting. It's unique. And I, I believe that Satan unleashed his, his, uh, an onslaught against our Savior to try to keep him from going from the cross, to, to keep him from, uh, from the end that would destroy Satan. Yet in every case, Jesus was easily able to cast out demons. Over and over. Perhaps you're in the midst of spiritual warfare now. Perhaps you're battling with something right now. Perhaps the, the devil is, is working in your life and you need, you need the Savior today. You need the Savior today to remove that, to, to heal you of that, to give you victory of that. I tell you, he's able to do that. He's able to do that. Jesus is able to cast out your demons. He's also, the Bible tells us, in the gospel records, that he's able to raise the dead. In Mark chapter 5, we don't need to turn there, but the familiar story of Jairus. Uh, Jairus was getting Jesus to come to, to raise his daughter up, his 12 year old daughter who was at the point of death, and uh, there was a delay. Jesus, 
Jesus says to Darius, he says, do not be afraid. He says, be not afraid, only believe. Of course, Jerry, he goes back to Jerry's house and raises the daughter up and uh, brings her back from the dead. Jesus was able to raise the dead. Now, I, I hesitate and I'm careful how I will apply this truth. But I do believe that Jesus is able to raise the dead. See, the soul lives forever. Our soul will live forever somewhere. And if Jesus does not come and rapture me out, this body has a shelf life. It has an expiration date. And this body will lay in the grave. But Jesus will raise this body again from the dead. Every grave, every, every, every graveyard that I go to, every funeral of a believer that I preach, every graveside funeral I preach, I say, this is a resurrection ground. And the day of resurrection comes and Jesus will call forth. Those graves are going to open. Now, I can't explain that scientifically. I can only explain it by faith. That Jesus is able to, res uh, to raise the dead. His resurrection proved that he is able. Hey, we serve a God that's able today. He ever lives. He is able. The Bible says he's able to save all of them that come to God. Number two, I want you to notice that he is available. That second phrase I just mentioned, he is available. Those that, that come to God by him, he is available to. Now, this is a great fact that we don't all enough over. This is a great fact that we really just take for granted. Uh, we, we, we say, okay, yes, we know that God is available. We know that Jesus is available. He's so available. He's uh, so available in prayer that we don't pray. We'll just say, oh, I'll pray later. I'm busy right now. I'm too busy for God. And so I will get around to God, I will get around to God when, I'm getting, I'm, I, when I have time. And we take for granted how available God is to us. The fact is, He's as available to us as we're available to Him. Most of the time, it's us that are not available. You know, we can only do a couple things at a time. People talk about being able to multitask, and I believe women are able to do this better than men. People be able to talk about being able to multitask and do several things at one time. But we're really able to do only a couple things well. We can do lots of things, but we may not do them well. Uh, maybe keep a couple conversations going on at one time. Maybe we can, uh, I, I, I can text a couple people and, and hopefully keep the uh, conversation going and not send a wrong text to the wrong person. That's been embarrassing, and you've done that before. Um, but the Lord Jesus can hear the prayer of every saint at the same time. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. But God is able. He is available to us. I love the song that Mark Bishop sings, uh, that he, uh, the, the, the song, One Voice. He says, I don't know how you heard one voice. So among the Roy, the song describes uh, how, how all the voices, uh, like in the morning, as, as a nation begins to raise and they begin to lift their prayers up to God, and how, he could, how God could hear his one single prayer amongst all the roar of the millions of saints all over praying at the same time but he did because he's available to us I tell you a priest a preacher a pastor may not be available I try to be available to our folks but there's been times of course that I'm not available a family member may not take you seriously a friend may not be able to help co-workers uh, neighbors acquaintances they may misunderstand you they may not even think you need help but I want to tell you that Christ is available. Hey, when he walked here below, he made himself available. It's interesting how Luke records how he made himself available to children. He made himself available to the blind. He made himself available to the sick. He made himself available to sinners. No, he didn't just go to the, the dignitaries. He didn't just go to those that were popular. He didn't just go to those that were in power. There was a constant demand on him. There was a constant demand, and yet he made himself.
yourself available. I mentioned the story of Jarius earlier. If you remember that story, uh, Jarius' daughter was sick, and so he goes and gets Jesus and says, Hey, come, my daughter's sick. And, and, she, and they're trying to get through, and there's a great crowd, and there's people. And in the same story, it's the story of the lady who had, uh, had an issue of blood for 12 years, and she said, If I could just break through the crowd, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just reach out and just touch the barely end of his clothes. And she does. and they came to him and said, hey, 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 you don't need to come to me. Hey, just, just say the word. You don't have to come. You're a busy man. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. The disciples came to him and said, hey, send the kids away. Don't bother the master. Oh, everybody was coming. And the disciples were trying to act like bodyguards and trying to keep the people away from Jesus. And Jesus said, no, bring them on. Let them come. He was available. He made himself available. I remember the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he's coming into Jericho, and Jesus is coming into Jericho, and Zacchaeus, he's a short man. So he's trying to look over the crowd, and he can't see. And he says, hey, I'm going to get up into the tree. I'm going to crawl up into the sycamore tree. And he crawls up into the tree, and Jesus stops and says, hey, Zacchaeus, I see you up there. I know you want to see me, but I'm going to do more than that. We're going to your house for lunch today. Jesus made himself available. And he's even more available today. The question is, is, are you available? Am I available? Can you stop your busy schedule and talk to him? Can you stop your busy schedule and listen to him? I tell you, if anything, maybe this whole, the way the world has changed, maybe it's got us to, to stop a lot of things. I was looking out my window this morning and, and how quiet the neighborhood was. The last couple of days I've got up, gone up running like I do usually in the morning and I'm thinking it is a ghost town in Danville. Uh, no cars on the road. Oh, eventually a little bit later, but early in the morning when there's usually some cars and some traffic, uh, it, it, things, have, things have stopped. Things have been canceled. Maybe we need to use this time to, uh, to, to, to make ourselves available to God, to listen to Him, to talk to Him. He's available to us. Number three, I want you to notice this morning, He is alive. He is alive. The Bible says, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hey, He ever liveth. This is the Easter message. He is alive. Alive. We serve a risen Savior today. Our passage says He ever lives to make intercession for us. He is right now in heaven pleading our case. He's pleading my pathetic case. His blood pardons my sin. His perfection is placed upon me. Because He is alive today. Because he's interceding for me today, I have some assurances. I have some assurances. I have some the assurance that, you know, I don't have to face temptation alone. I don't have to face temptation alone. Sometimes when I face temptation, I think, hey, nobody knows what I'm going through, but God knows. The fact is, he's watching me. And that fact that he's watching me should keep me from temptation, deliver me from temptation. No matter how strong the temptation seems, I don't have to face them alone. Oh, I tell you, when temptation comes, I need to look for the escape. We need to look for the way out. Too many times we focus on the temptation. 
And, and Paul tells us that we need to be looking for the escape, that God always provides an escape with every temptation. He's interceding for me so I don't have to face temptation alone. Hey, I don't have to face trials alone. God knows what I'm going through. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're facing today. I don't have to put it on social media. I don't have to tell everybody. I don't have to sing my uh, pity, uh, uh, pity song, pity me song. Hey, God knows what I'm going through. And he's going through them with me. I don't have to face my trials alone. I have the assurance that because he is alive and he's interceding for me, hey, when I stumble, when I stumble and I, and I do more than I want to, more than, I'm, more than I'm willing to say, when I stumble, he picks me back up. Can I tell you, I want you to turn to one of my favorite passages in the Bible. The Old Testament, it's the book of Micah. It may take you a second to find it. Micah chapter 7 in the Old Testament. One of the, um, one of the minor prophets that we don't read a whole lot. But this is precious. I remember oh, about 20 years ago, I was introduced to this verse. I probably read it several times before then. But what a precious verse. Micah chapter 7. Were you turning there? Will you find it? Micah chapter 7. Won't you remember this? Micah chapter 7 and verse 7 it says, therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. What a great verse. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Micah says, hey, hey, when I fall, rejoice not against me, Miami. When I fall, I'm getting back up. I'm going to get back up because my Savior is interceding for me. He hears me. He sees me. He knows what I'm going through. And when I fall and when I stumble, he'll pick me back up. Have you stumbled today? Have you stumbled recently? Have you run over some rough road? And your feet hurt and you've fallen? Hey, our Savior lives to intercede for us. He'll pick you back up. And then I have the assurance because he is interceding for me that because he arose, so will I. Because he rose, I'll arise too. Hey, my body, like I said earlier, my body will rise again. I will live again. I preached, I think last year, it was last Easter I preached, maybe two Easter's ago, I preached on how Jesus was the first fruit. Paul says that he was the first fruit from the dead. We are the full harvest. He was the first fruit. Because he's the first fruit. First for the, he's proof that we will be the full harvest. We will rise again. If we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we will rise again. Hey, why do I live like I serve a dead Savior? We serve a living Savior. We serve a living Savior. We say that. We celebrate that. We, we, we celebrate. We say that at Easter. We say, hey, He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we say that. But why do I live like He's dead? He is alive. Because He's alive, He's available to me. He's available to you. And because he's alive and he's available, he's able. He's able to save to the uttermost. Nobody's too lost to be saved. Hey, this Easter service, can I just ask you something? Is Christ your Savior? I underline the word your. Is he your personal Savior? I know he's the Savior of the world. He's my Savior. Is it your Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? I mean, are you tired of carrying around the burden of unforgiven sins? You're carrying around that burden, and you and you want them to be you want the burden to be to be taken away, the, the burden of your sins. Oh, would you not cry out for repentance? Would you not repent of those sins today and cry out for Him to save you? 
Oh, He will. He will. He wants to. Will you do it? Will you repent today and call out to Jesus and say, if we can help you do that, we'd love to do so. It's not difficult. Confess your sins. Seek His forgiveness. Call out to Him. Ask Him to say, He will. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He can be your Savior today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You today for the Word of God. Thank You for it. That You're able, that You're available. Lord, that You're alive today. You serve a risen Savior. Father, I pray for the soul today that's nearest hell. Pray for the soul today that, that, uh, that's walking um, a dangerous path that have never received you as their personal Savior. Lord, you're able to save them to the uttermost. I pray for the believer today that struggles with sin, that needs forgiveness of sins, that needs to be, uh, that needs deliverance from temptation. Father, would you show them that you're able? Father, I pray for the, for the Christian who's just really disinterested in you that, that doesn't give you their time. Would you, would you show them that you're available, that, that we should be available to you? You're alive today, and we rejoice and celebrate that today. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. A couple announcements before we finish up today. I appreciate you waiting around to the very end. I hope you are watching all of the services that we that we uh, that we put out. I hope you're making the the uh, the service time six thirty tonight, and that Pastor Hunter will bring a message. And um, hope you'll tune in tonight. Uh, you may watch them later in, in if that's your schedule. Um, uh, but uh, I want to encourage you, Grace Baptist Church that uh, carve out those times. Um, make those times sacred. If you're available, if, you, if you're not having to work, if, you're not, if you, you, you have an essential job and you're able to work, that's wonderful and you cannot make it, uh, watch it later, that's, that's something you, you, you can do. But, uh, if, uh, but I would encourage you to make the services. Um, we uh, do want to, uh, once again, remind you, we have the online giving. Many of you are sending in checks to the mail and doing your giving that way and that's available P.O. Box 13 in Coatesville if you want to just send your tithes and offerings in that way or you can use the online giving through the website. Um, keep praying for the foyer as uh, we're, we're modeling the foyer and uh, that's coming along. A lot of work's going, going into this week and uh, we almost got everything tore up so now we're starting to build up. We're looking forward to uh, things starting to look better instead of worse but we're in the process of that. When we come back to have services, it will be a great wow effect um, as, uh, as you come back to a finished product. Thank you for joining me this Easter morning, and I will look forward to seeing you this evening. Thank you. God bless you. Well, thank you for watching the YouTube video today. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button in the notification. That means every time we put one of these out, it automatically you'll get a notification that we've got a new video out. And uh, we're just humbled by uh, you taking the time. There's a lot of things on YouTube that you've taken the time to watch this video. Uh, we're learning, uh, working, and uh, getting this uh, all put together. Um, thank you for your time today. God bless you.